you make yourself the hero of your own story. And it follows the same old story. And we want to know what that fundamental story is because you're all human. And then, you know, you can decide how you're going to act it out. But at least you need to know the damn story first. In order to really understand this powerful pattern, let's go briefly through origins of the concept of the hero journey. I personally deepen my understanding of this concept through lectures of Dr. Jordan Peterson, which we're going to rely on later in this video. But the concept of the hero's journey can be tracked back to the work of Joseph Campbell, a scholar and philosopher. In his book The Hero with a Thousand Faces, first published in 1949, Campbell explored the common themes and patterns found in myths, stories and different cultures throughout history. His research led him to identify what he called the monomyth, a universal story structure that appears in myths, legends across the world. In simple words, hero's journey is composed of the series of stages that the hero must pass through in order to complete their quest. While it's most commonly associated with the myths and legends, what is really interesting is that this very pattern can be found in our own lives, as hero journey represents a fundamental aspect of the human experience. By understanding this structure, we can gain a sense of clarity, purpose and direction and find inspiration to move forward in our own journey of personal growth and transformation. The beginning of the hero's journey is the first stage known as a call to adventure. This is when the hero is called to leave their ordinary world and embark on a journey of transformation. The call to adventure often takes a form of challenge, a problem or a significant change in the hero's circumstances that forces them to leave their comfort zone and seek out new experiences and opportunities. In real life, we can think of the call to adventure as a moment of decision or a turning point that set us on a new path. This might be a sudden realization that we need to make a change in our lives such as leaving a job or relationship that is no longer serving us. It could also be a financial crisis or a major life transition like moving to a new city or starting a family. The truth is that we are being called to adventure more often than we think. We are being faced with challenges and opportunities on a daily basis. These changes can disturb our comfortable routine and force us to adapt to a new environment and responsibilities. That's why we often prefer to stay comfortable within our comfort zone. And that is leading us to the next step on our journey, which is a refusal of the call. In the hero's journey, the refusal of the call is a natural part of the process as it reflects the hero's resistance to change and the challenges that lay ahead. It is important moment because it sets up the tension between the hero's desire for growth and transformation and their fear of the unknown. Very similar thing happen in our lives. We often refuse the call to adventure because the unknown can be scary and uncomfortable. Our brains are wired to seek safety and comfort and we often perceive the unknown as a threat to our well-being. In addition, we might be attached to our current lifestyles or identity, or we might fear failure or rejection if we step outside of our comfort zone. It can be tempting to stay in a familiar and predictable environment, even if it means sacrificing our personal growth and dreams. And of course, we all need a certain level of comfort in order to function properly. When our basic needs for safety and shelter are met, we are better able to focus on the higher level goals, such as personal growth and fulfilling our desires. However, it's important to recognize that comfort can also be limiting. If we become too attached to comfort and routine, we might fail to realize that we need to pursue new opportunities, which is vital for our sense of purpose and happiness. So it's important to remember that refusing the call to adventure can also come at cost. 
Without new challenges and opportunities for growth, we can become stuck in patterns of behavior that limit our potential. And I believe deep down, we all know this. We can sense that answering the call is the right thing to do. You cannot catch something you're not pursuing. So now, if you're pursuing it, that doesn't mean you'll catch it. But generally, you'll catch something interesting along the way. Yeah. You know, that's the, that's the thing that's so cool about this. Let's say you set out a vision, you start pursuing it, you don't get what you were after. But you learn a lot as you move towards that destination. And as you learn, your vision is going to change and you may end up with something that's better than what you were aiming at to begin with. But that won't happen unless you initiate the journey. Another stage in Hero's journey is crossing the threshold. The journey of crossing the threshold means answering that call, taking the leap of faith and embracing uncertainty and seeking out new opportunities. In mythology and fiction, crossing the threshold might involve a physical travel, such as crossing a body of water or entering a new realm. In your life, crossing the threshold can take many forms, depending on the nature of your journey. It may involve taking a significant step out of your comfort zone, starting a new job or ending a relationship, pursuing a passion or a dream, or embracing a new identity. Crossing the threshold can be a scary and challenging experience, as it often requires us to confront our fears and face the unknown. For example, imagine a person who has always wanted to start their own business, but has been too afraid to take the first step. Crossing the threshold for them might mean quitting the current job, investing the current savings in the new venture and taking on the risk and challenges that comes with being an entrepreneur. The question is, if you want something, what does it mean to want it? And what it means is to sacrifice whatever is necessary to get it, because otherwise you don't want it. And so there's an equation here, and I'm not claiming its ultimate accuracy, but the equation is something like, you don't want it unless you're willing to sacrifice for it. And if you don't want it, you're not going to get it, because you're scattered. But if you do want it and you make the proper sacrifices, then God only knows what might happen. Next stage on the hero's journey is known as the test allies and enemies. In this stage, the hero begins to face a series of challenges and obstacles that will test their skills, determination and character. These challenges often take the form of battles, trials or puzzles that the hero must overcome in order to progress on their journey. At this stage, the hero might also encounter allies who can provide support and guidance, or enemies who seek to hinder their progress. Allies can take many forms, such as mentors, friends or supernatural force, and they often provide the hero with the valuable knowledge or resources that can help them on their quest. Enemies, on the other hand, might seek to block the hero's path or harm them in some way. This stage is an important part of the hero's journey as it represents a time of growth where they develop new skills and strengths that will be crucial in later stages of their journey. In real life, we can think of this stage as a time of challenges, obstacles and adversity. We may encounter setbacks or failures that will test our determination or we might face enemies that will seek to prevent us from achieving our goals. By recognizing this stage in your own life, you can gain insight into the challenges and obstacles you face and develop the resilience and determination needed to overcome them. We can also seek out allies and supporters who can help us on our journey. We often meet the most valuable people in our lives in the moments of need and crisis. There's always people around you who would be willing to give you a helping hand. The next step of the hero's journey is the approach to the inmost cave. This stage is a crucial turning point in the hero's journey as the hero prepares to confront the greatest challenge and face the darkest fears. The inmost cave is a metaphorical representation of hero's subconscious mind, representing the hero's deepest fears, doubts and vulnerabilities. 
in mythology and fiction, approaching the inmost cave is often accompanied by a sense of trepidation and uncertainty. Once there, the hero must confront the greatest fears and overcome the doubts to emerge stronger and more capable than before. In your own life, the approach to the inmost cave may also represent confronting the deepest fears and vulnerabilities. This could mean facing a difficult truth about yourself, overcoming a long-lasting addiction or a habit, or coming to a terms with a traumatic experience from the past. Approaching the inmost cave will be scary and uncomfortable experience, as it requires us to confront the parts of ourselves that we might have been avoiding or denying. It's a necessary and unavoidable step in our personal growth and transformation. By facing and making the peace with our deepest fears, we can let go of our doubts and emerge stronger, more resilient and more self-aware. Here's a rule. Don't avoid doing things because they make you feel negative emotion. If you have to do those things in order to pursue your goals, in fact, you should do exactly the opposite. So let's say you're pursuing a goal and you find that you're afraid about something and so you're avoiding it. The first thing you should think is, aha, look, I'm afraid of something and I'm avoiding it. Drag it, treasure, exactly there. And that's exactly right. It's precisely right. If you're, if you're afraid of the thing, then what that means is that you're not developed enough to handle it. And you need to be. So you should think about that as a discovery, like a positive discovery. You found out where you have a weakness and you're now able to address it. People are unbelievably tough and resourceful creatures. And even if you think that you're not up to the challenge, you can be sure that encoded in your bodily structure somewhere are abilities that you don't really understand that would come to the forefront if you put yourself in a situation where they were necessary. Ultimately, the approach to the inmost cave is about confronting our own limitations and learning to push beyond them. This is your biggest obstacle that is holding you back. In the same time, it's the key to becoming the hero of your own story. The next stage of the hero's journey is the ordeal. This is the most intense and critical stage of the journey, where the hero must confront the greatest challenge and face their most difficult test. The ordeal is the moment of the greatest danger for the hero, where the stakes are the highest and the outcome is most uncertain. This stage of the journey requires the hero to draw on all of their skills and resources to survive. In our lives, the ordeal might involve a period of intense struggle, uncertainty and self-doubt, and can be a time of great emotional and psychological distress. The key to surviving the ordeal is to stay focused, remain true to our values and beliefs, and draw on all of our inner strength and resources. By facing our fears and overcoming our limitations, we can emerge from the ordeal with a newfound sense of purpose and direction, and a deeper understanding of ourselves and our place in the world. I read from Carl Jung, it's an alchemical motif in Sterquilinus Inventor, which is what you most want to be found will be found where you least want to look, essentially. And it's so interesting because it means that if you're willing to turn around and to stand up, say, stand up straight and face the darkness like fully, what you discover at the darkest part is the brightest light and that's something that's so much worth discovering because there's going to be terrible darkness in your life and it's going to make you cynical and bitter and it could easily be that you're just not looking at it enough because if you looked at it enough and you didn't shy away and you brought everything you had to bear on it you'd find that there was more to you than there was to the horror Next, we have the reward stage. After the hero has successfully faced their most challenging obstacle, they are rewarded with something valuable that they have been seeking throughout their journey. The reward might have come in the form of treasure, recognition or knowledge. The key to the reward stage is to celebrate and acknowledge the hero's achievement as it provides a sense of closure and accomplishment. 
It is a time to reflect on the hero's journey so far and appreciate how far they have come. By recognizing the value of the reward and understanding how it represents their success, the hero is empowered to continue on their journey and achieve their full potential. In real world, the reward can take form of a satisfaction of achieving a long-term goal, such as landing a dream job or completing a challenging project. The reward might also be a sense of personal growth and transformation, such as overcoming a difficult obstacle or learning a new skill. It should be important for us to appreciate our achievements and be grateful for them. The reward is a reminder of our strength and the progress we have made, and it provides us with motivation to continue on the path of personal growth and self-discovery. After receiving the reward, the hero must return to the old world. This can be a difficult and dangerous journey, as the hero might face new obstacles and challenges on their way back. In mythology and fiction, the road back often involves a physical journey from the underworld. For us, it may involve returning to the daily routine of work or school after a transformative experience. The road back can be challenging as we might face resistance from others who are not aware of our transformation. Perhaps you went through similar experience already. Maybe you've changed your identity or you improved some area of your life or your personality and when you enter the old environment, you've been judged. The old friends had a hard time accepting your new identity. Instead of appreciating your transformation, people in your environment try to ridicule you or downplay your achievements. The key to the road back is to remain focused on your own hero's journey and remember the lessons you have learned. It's nice and encouraging to feel approval from others, but if you don't, that's okay too. Some people will support you, some people won't. That's normal. However challenging, don't allow this to distract you. By remaining focused and committed to your journey, you will continue to grow and develop, ultimately achieving your full potential. You can trust that the right people will show up on your journey. And the other thing, you know, people don't exactly understand that they, it's okay morally to choose people that are trying to help you be better and to shy away from people who are going to drag you down. In this stage of the journey, hero faces a final challenge or a threat, which often involves a symbolic death and rebirth. After which, hero realizes that he is not the same person anymore. This is a culmination of the story. It represents the ultimate victory over the greatest challenge. They have proven their worth and achieved their full potential. This stage is especially meaningful for us because it represents the process of solidifying our new identity and leaving the past behind, which is often very difficult for us, as we need to allow part of ourselves to die in order for the new part of us to grow and expand. Here are a few clips from Dr. Peterson that describe this process. And that's also a really useful insight, a metaphorical insight into the nature of sacrifice, right? It, it's also a lot easier to let go of something when you're deciding to let go of it because you've decided yourself that you're done with that. It's a weak part of you. It needs to disappear. You do that yourself, it's much better and much easier than it is if it's taken away from you forcibly, in which case you're very much likely to fight it. But I really like this idea. I think it's a profound idea that the process of recapitulating yourself continually is also the process of it's a phoenix-like process, right? You're shedding all those elements of you that are no longer worthy of the pursuits that you're, that you're valuing. When you're learning, even when you're learning incrementally, there's a process of letting go and a process of building. So when you learn something new, you have to let go of an old presupposition of some sort. And those presuppositions are, are alive because they're part of you. And part of what that means is that every, every element of learning in the face of something normal is often also an undoing of previous learning. And that's partly why the motif of death and rebirth is such a powerful one through, throughout human history. 
It doesn't sound like this would be a comfortable experience for us, and it isn't. That's why so many people postpone this process forever. Your attitude is crucial here. You can resist it or you can embrace it. The choice is yours. One thing I would say is that by now, you already went through so much. And if there was something in your life prior to that journey that wasn't serving you, let go of it. You deserve better. You deserve to try something new. It's time and you're ready for it. The last part of this journey is the return stage. This is the final stage of the journey where the hero returns to the ordinary world with a new knowledge, wisdom or a gift. In mythology and fiction, the return often involves sharing the gift with others. By sharing their knowledge and wisdom, the hero can create positive change in the world and inspire others to do the same. In your own journey, the return might also involve sharing your knowledge, wisdom or gifts that you gain through your personal growth and experiences with others in your community or workplace. The key to the return stage is to integrate the lessons and gifts gained throughout the hero's journey into your everyday life. By doing so, you can continue to grow and develop and help others to do the same. You're winning a game that everyone wants to play. Well, what a deal. You get to move forward and everyone else gets to enjoy it. Well, that's a good definition of success. It's an archetypal definition of success, actually, because if you succeed properly, then your success benefits everyone else. So, hard to imagine that there could be anything particularly wrong with that. While not every individual will experience each stage of the hero's journey in the same way or in the same order, this pattern can be a useful tool for understanding and making meaning of our own experiences. I really hope you'll find this video helpful and you will be able to recognize yourself on this journey and use this knowledge to your advantage. Personally, whenever I'm faced with the challenges or opportunities, this structure gives me a sense of clarity and inspiration. I know what to expect and I can prepare myself for what's coming. And that's what's so helpful because, you know, if you're in a place and you don't know what to do and that's that, you're done. But if there's a pattern to what you could do in a circumstance like that, then you land on your feet and you're ready to contend. And maybe the trip down into the underworld is something you can undertake on your own accord. And you can come back with the treasure instead of, instead of ending up as dragon food or worse. Transformation and personal growth is not an easy path. And I hope that by understanding your own hero's journey, you will be better equipped to deal with your fears and worries. Even if you live a very simple life, far from heroic missions, remember that this is your hero's journey. You're going through the same pattern of existence and your story is equally important. Your life has a meaning, your decisions matter, so never give up on becoming a better version of yourself. Never give up on your dreams and desires. You're going to experience this pattern many, many times in your life. You might as well see yourself as the hero on this journey. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.